long ago in the kingdom of the animals. There was absolute peace. All the animals will wake up and go about their businesses during the day. Birds, elephants, rabbits, foxes and so on. They ran their kingdom just like humans did. And the lion, of course, was their leader. In the evening, some of the animals will gather together and engage themselves in different forms of entertainment. The baby animals will engage in hide and seek, storytelling and other activities until a little late in the night before they finally retire. All the animals lived very happily and life was beautiful. Life continued like this until one day, some night hunters invaded their kingdom. They killed so many animals. It was such a horrible night for them. Some of the animals lost relatives, while some others lost their friends. It was the first time this was ever happening in their kingdom. For they live in the deep part of the forest, far away from humans. How could this have happened? The lion asked when they gathered the next day. May this never happen to us again, he finished. Among the animals that were affected by the incident was the young owl. He was with his mother when the incident happened and sadly, his dear mother was among the animals that had been killed by the hunters. This terrified him so greatly as much as it broke his heart. It was difficult to sleep. He dreaded nightfall. He would wish all time was day so the night hunters would not take them unawares. He would stay up at night while others were sleeping and would sleep during the day while others were working. That became his new routine. One night, not long after the first attack, the night hunters came again. The owl saw them coming and became very terrified. He tried to scream, but all that was coming out was hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. The moment the hunters heard that, they became frightened. What was that sound? One of them asked. And they heard the sound again. They have never heard anything like it before. It grew louder and louder as the owl struggled to call out to the other animals. The hunters took to their heels, falling over themselves and losing their headlamps in the process. Some of the animals who heard the owl were very angry because they felt he was disturbing their sleep. Meanwhile, the little owl was surprised but very happy. What, what, what could have sent the hunters running like that? He thought. The next day, he tried to narrate the incident to the other animals, but none of them would believe him. Though some animals saw some lambs, but they believed it could have been from the previous incident that happened. Later that night, the hunters came again. They enjoyed their achievements on the first night and had thought that whatever made that noise the last time would have gone away. The owl was up again, as usual. And as soon as he saw them, he was once again terrified. He tried to call out to the other animals, but the words were not just coming out. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. He cried louder and louder that yet again, the hunters took to their heels. They ran and ran. Meanwhile, some of the animals who had heard the owl the previous night got angry. How much longer do we have to tolerate you? The elephant yelled. The owl tried to explain what had happened. The, the night hunters came again, he announced. They were here last night too. I tried to call out to you all and the words couldn't come out. But I saw them running away. Same thing happened this night, he continued. The noise you heard me making was me trying to call out to all of you again. Please believe me. The other animals would hear none of it. There was so much argument that the lion came out and asked what they wanted. He has obviously been traumatized since he no longer sees this place as safe. 
let him go away from this kingdom and stop disturbing our sleep? The elephant suggested. The other animals agreed and the owl was sent out of the kingdom. That night, the hunters came yet again. For they had agreed among themselves that after one more trial, if they heard that noise again, they would never again visit that part of the forest. Luckily for them, the owl was not there this time. It was a fine night for the hunters and another very horrible night for the animals. When they met the next morning, they could not control their pains and tears. The owl was right after all, the rabbit said. Oh yes, he was, the elephant agreed. So what do we do now? The fox asked. We will send the eagle to go look for him and bring him back before nightfall, the lion said. That day, the eagle went looking for the owl and luckily he found him and they both returned to the kingdom. They had confirmed that the noise from the little owl was what scared the hunters away. They encouraged the owl to continue. Yes, the hunters did come again at different times, but they were scared away by the brave and little owl. And after a few more trials, they stopped coming and considered that part of the forest sacred. Until this day, most humans are still very scared of the hooting of the owl. And yes, the owl still stays up at night and sleep very little by day. in a very small village. There was a girl named Amarachi. She was a very beautiful girl. In fact, she was the most beautiful girl in the entire village. Her long hair, beautiful eyes, pointed nose. These were some of the most adorable things about her look. Amarachi was the only child of her parents and both were farmers and owned the second largest farm in the entire village. Amarachi's beauty distinguished her among her peers. Whenever her parents took her for a walk, the other villages would always marvel at her beauty. Many say Amarachi's beauty make the moon jealous. Years passed and Amarachi grew in beauty, but sadly, she also became very rude and disrespectful. She was too full of herself that she would walk past elders in the village and not say good morning. Those who admired her beauty were becoming very disappointed with her behavior by the day. One day, Amarachi and her best friend Uloma went to the market square to buy some groceries. It was truly a busy day at the market as everyone was busy shopping in preparation for the Onwuru festival. The Onwuru festival is the annual village festival that ushers in the planting season. As Amarachi tried to make her way through one of the busy aisles in the market, she accidentally stepped on a crippled woman who was also trying to make her way through the busy aisle as well. Rather than apologize, Amarachi proceeded as though nothing had happened. The woman moved back a little and held Amarachi's heel. With her shaky voice, she asked, My daughter, didn't you notice me? Furious that the woman had touched her, Amarachi snapped, You stupid old woman! How dare you touch me! Can you give birth to a child as beautiful as I am? Yet you call me your child, you dirty looking cripple! Her friend Uloma tried to stop her, 
but she would hear none of it. Other buyers were amazed by Amarachi's response to the helpless woman. How can she be so beautiful yet so rude? Someone whispered. The old crippled woman felt very embarrassed. So someday soon, she said, you will be just as ugly and helpless as I am. And she crawled away. That night, it rained like never before in the village. And the next morning, Amarachi accompanied her parents to the farm. Their farm was located somewhere close to a big pit where the villagers dumped refuse. In fact, to get to their farm, Amarachi and her parents would have to pass through a narrow path beside the pit where refuse were dumped. That day, the ground was very slippery because of the heavy rain the previous night. And as they walked, suddenly Amarachi lost her balance, hitting her head on a big wood and landed heavily on her back into the pit. Her parents screamed for help and quickly the villagers gathered and brought her out of the pit. She was immediately taken to the home of the village herbal doctor. And in order to treat the big cut on her head, the herbalist had to shave off her very beautiful hair. He also examined her fractures and sadly informed her parents that she would not be able to walk again as her spine had been badly damaged due to the fall. Amarachi cried and cried and as the tears flowed, she remembered her encounter with the old crippled woman and the curse she had laid on her before she crawled away. So someday soon, you will be just as ugly and helpless as I am. Stories had it later that the old woman was a spirit being and in fact, the heavy rain the previous night was no rain at all. It was the old cripple woman who had cried all night because of the insults Amarachi hurled at her. Amarachi regretted what she did. Had I known, she cried. A long time ago in the kingdom of the wings, the vulture was the most beautiful of all the birds. Most of the other birds envied her large wings. She was not only beautiful, but she was very good in so many other things. She was a good singer, she was swift, strong, and a very good hunter too. It was difficult not to notice the vulture among all the birds. She loved to compete a lot and she hated to lose. The first time she lost in a hunting competition, she was so sad that she stayed a whole day without food. One day, the birds gathered and decided to compete on who would fly the highest. Some of the birds declared their intention to be part of the competition. The eagle, the stork, swan, the goose, the falcon, and of course, our friend the vulture. She was very excited about the competition. Ah, finally, I will make up for the loss the last time, she thought to herself. She looked forward to the day they would fly. And as the day approached, she became more and more excited and filled with so much ambition. There was no way she was going to lose this competition. She practiced flying every day, going on a higher altitude each day than the previous day. When the day finally came, 
the vulture was very ready. She was confident that she would win. All the other birds gathered at the arena to watch. The other birds who were to compete with the vulture also arrived at the arena. It was going to be a very big competition. The competing birds came out. The parrot was to lead the count. One, two, go! The birds took off, going higher and higher and higher. The vulture had no care. She knew she would win. The falcon was the first to give up after a while, followed by the hawk, and one by one, the other birds followed. But her friend the vulture was not paying attention to anything. She was so eager to win that she did not realize that she had flown above safety level. She was getting closer and closer to the sun. And ah! She screamed and lost consciousness. She began to descend. And luckily for her, the birds had already taken some security measures by putting some safety nets a little above the ground level in case any of the birds would fall. The vulture landed heavily on the net and by the time she opened her eyes after a few minutes, she saw all the other birds standing around and watching her. She tried to move but ah, she couldn't. She was in such a nasty pain. What could have happened to me? She thought. And then she remembered. Oh no! Her overambitiousness has put her into trouble. She was badly burnt by the sun. She lost so much hair, especially around her head and neck. Oh, her beauty! Her beauty is gone. Yes, she won the title as the highest flying bird. But sadly, she learned a very bitter lesson. Once upon a time, in a far, far away village, there was a man. His name was Okunpo. He had a breadfruit tree. This tree is popularly known as the Okwa tree among the Igbos in the eastern region of Nigeria. The breadfruit is a very special delicacy among the Igbos. Okunpo was a poor man, very poor indeed. He had no land just a very small compound where he lived with his family. And so he planted the tree in his compound, very close to the fence. Some years passed, and the tree grew bigger and bigger, until it became so big and its branches grew into his neighbor's side of the fence. The tree always made the whole place dirty whenever he sheds its leaves. More years passed, and every day both neighbors would take time to sweep the leaves that the tree had shed on their own sides of the compound. Within a few hours, it would get dirty again, especially during the hammer time period. And so one day, Okonkwa's neighbor got angry and decided that he didn't want his neighbor's tree to grow to his side of the fence anymore. He went straight to Okonkwa's house and knocked on his door. Please, Mr. Okonkwa. I need you to cut off the branches of your ukwa tree on my side of the compound. I am tired of having to sweep off the leaves every now and then. I am tired, he continued. Why do I have to sweep these leaves? After all, it's not mine. And what's the use of keeping a tree that has no use anyway? You've been keeping this tree for several years. Why not cut it down and save us some stress? He emphasized. Okonkwa told him not to worry. Allow the tree to remain there a while. Be a little more patient, he said. The fruit will begin to blossom soon and you will get whatever is on your side of the fence to yourself. 
Okonkwa told him it's a very special species of the breadfruit that he got from a far away village. The fruits will come out a lot when it's time. Okonkwa's neighbor insisted that he cut down the branches of the tree on his own side. He had been sweeping off the leaves on his side of the fence for over four years. Why? And he cannot tolerate that any longer. And so, Okonkwa went up the tree and painfully cut off the branches on his neighbor's side. Just a few months after, the fruits began to grow on the tree. There were so many fruits growing on the tree that when Okonkwa began to sell them, he made so much money from it that changed his life for the better. The neighbor 